Hey, I'm Jack Kellogg with Alex Temez. We are both traders and we're very excited to talk with Devin about uh, Truth Social. Well, thanks for having us on, man. Yeah, yeah, thanks for uh, being here. Really yeah. appreciate it, love the hat. So our first question for you is, you've obviously been in politics for a long time and you said you got started in 1996. And getting into politics, there's so much corruption, right? So what kept you motivated and going after seeing all like the negativity out there and, and seeing everything kind of in shambles? Yeah, I guess, you know, you just have that in you, right? That just willingness to persevere. You care about the country. You care about people that you work with. And as, as you guys you know, know, but your audience probably doesn't, the reason that I left politics to get into what is arguably one of the most strangest jobs in the world where I have a public company that we're building, you know, trying to build a company, technology company, dealing with games of Wall Street and dealing with politics, right? So I was kind of uniquely suited to, you know, somebody who had to kind of shepherd this through the process to become a public company, which wasn't easy. Um, and I think what, what keeps you motivated is like, I believe in the cause of having basic communications in this country. What does that mean? Right? Like, how are you going to keep the internet open in order to, you know, so that people can practice freedom of speech? And I saw that just going away, right? I saw I was in Washington and I saw that every day it went away. I mean, we, you saw millions of people that were kicked off every platform. I mean, still people on, on all the, on all kind of the, the big tech giants. I mean, people are, are, are every day are being either shadow banned or their content's being placed or they're putting like silly flags on the, on the content. I mean, it's the most ridiculous thing ever. I mean, this didn't exist 10 years ago, right? I mean, I think if Facebook would have just left everybody alone, Facebook would probably still be like a big growing platform today. I mean, it's still big, don't get me wrong, but you know, they've lost a lot of market share to TikTok and Instagram. I mean, they, are, they own Instagram, but you know what I mean? A lot of people have moved over to Instagram. Kind of on their way out. It seems like that. Yeah, yeah it seems like that. Um, so that's why I, you know, I just believe in, uh, you know, believe in causes and you, you just put your head down every day and you go to work, you stay focused. And, um, you know, I, I, you like to, I got into politics to, you know, help the country and I left politics really to help the country. I always tell people Trump didn't need a company and I didn't need a, a new job. Um, but somebody had to, to do this. Got to put the country first and freedom of speech. Yeah. Well, it's you can't, so important. you can't win. You know, in politics, you're in a battle of ideas. You can't win on those ideas if you don't have basic communications, right? If you, because then you're just a voice in the, in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And that's why I like to tell people it wasn't that, it wasn't that we all got banned. It was that they put us in like the internet ghetto, right? Because you, mm -hmm. you still had an account, but it didn't matter what you posted. Nobody could see it. And then, of course, and then they got crazy. And then, the, then they went totally nuts when after the election and they kicked, when they kicked Trump off of every platform. Crazy. And then destroyed Parler, which was a early kind of Twitter alternative that I was, that I was on. And you, know, you had 30, remember you had like 30 U.S. companies that refused to work with them and destroyed a company, a billion dollar company. It's crazy. Yeah. What makes America special is this idea of freedom of speech. What does freedom of speech mean to you? Well, to me, it's just, it's, it's real simple. It's just, you know, you should have the ability to, uh, within, the, within the law, say what you want, right? You can't break the law, um, but it's, it's, it's really the foundational principle of, you know, this, our whole system, right? If people can't express dissatisfaction with their government, um, and look, we have a great example of that, that, that in, in recent memory. You know, you had the, during COVID, the government came in and regulated with the big tech companies, what you could say about what was happening during COVID. I mean, I know I was in Congress in that time. I'm like, what the hell is, what are they doing? Like, if you don't want to, if you don't want to take a vaccine, a new vaccine, you shouldn't have to do it. And you should have been punished on social media for saying you didn't like it. Or on the other hand, you had and people, work. Or, or you had people that, yeah, that work. I was going to say, or you have people that, that you know, doctors who had, had, had seen success with long time known medicines, that if you put that on your platform, like even if you guys would have said it on a podcast or what have you, you it would have been banned. If you said, oh, they, I heard my buddy took ivermectin, boom, you would have been gone. You know? And now of course it comes out that years later, 
that you know indeed ivermectin in some cases did you know did work right I, I don't want to get into it's not really I don't want to get into debate COVID again but the point is is that you have to have a basic way to communicate in this country if the country is going to survive and so it's sadly the country's splitting apart you see the red states getting redder the blue states getting bluer um, but you know we're going to have a communications architecture for all Americans uh, to use that, are, you know, we're not going to shadow ban people and we're not going to censor people, um, but we are going to, you know, you know, we are going to build this company. And you know, a lot of people know us for True Social, but what we're really, you know, we're really excited about is our streaming service that we're getting ready to build because the same thing happens as people are cutting the cord. There's so many channels out there that don't get the time of day. You know, that are, that are doing 24 seven news and information content that many of the legacy dinosaur platforms, Comcast, Spectrum, you name it, even YouTube TV, won't allow them on, won't allow them on. So we're building that infrastructure out um, in order to have, so that these places have a home um, and we're gonna be that home. And there's surprisingly enough, there's you know, a lot of religious uh, um, content that, doesn't have a home or they have to pay a lot to be on that home. So we think that's a great opportunity. And there's all the you know, films that aren't getting the time of day, documentaries that aren't getting the time of day. Um, you know, we saw that most recently because we were one of the main uh, um, social, well, we were really the, the social media company that launched Jim Caviezel's film, The Sound of Freedom, that went to number one last year. Uh, and they weren't having any success on the others. Um, and you know that that film went to number one. You know it launched, it went into theaters uh, right around the Fourth of July, I and mean, it was amazing. But that was True Social working with Rumble that really made that happen. You know after they had spent a lot of advertising dollars on Facebook and everywhere else, and you know we helped to make them number one. So we're we're really exciting about streaming. We've been working on it for a long time, um, and you know we think we have a product that's going to take the technology. The best of the technology that you see in Netflix, Sling, and Pluto, and we'll and we're putting into one tech stack. It's definitely something to be really excited about. In terms of Truth Social, so when you go onto the Discover page, it's like Trump 2024. Everything's like Trump. How important do you think it is to also have uh, some blue people and liberals to also come on the Truth Social to mm -hmm. grow more, so it's not just so like conservative of an app, do you think that's very key in the success to for the longevity or? Look, you, you Biden is on the platform. Mm -hmm. So is Gavin Newsom. And we have a lot of Republicans who aren't on the platform, right? Mm -hmm. So we just happen to, just happens to be, you gotta remember, the people that are on our platform that came on early is because they weren't on any other platforms, mm -hmm. right? So you're gonna naturally have that. So when you see on the, the Discover page is basically very simple. Those are just like the, the larger group. So if you go on to look, that's what you're gonna see. Um, and I think you know, the groups you know, is, a, is gonna be, I think in the long run, I'm kind of excited about it because I have, you know, there's, there is stuff on the groups that's not politics. Like then they're actually really good groups. We have a Cook's Lounge, it's really well run. Um, so if you like cooking, it's a great place to be. I have a wine group. Nice. You know, I like wine. It's uh, so it's it's you know you're going to see more and more of that guns. I mean, there's all sorts of things that are on there, um, but it just so happens that a lot of the more conservative ones that are conservative politics have have the most people, but they have the most people because you know those are the people that weren't allowed on any other platforms yeah. when we launched. Yeah, and I see you work. Today. I see you work very close with Rumble. Uh -huh. Vision, mission, your goals are very aligned. Is there ever a world where you could see yourself? having a much closer relationship with Rumble, as in some sort of merger or acquisition or anything like that? Well, you know, look, we're, right now we, I mean, we are, I mean, we're partners on everything, right? Um, I mean, we tested out their advertising center. We tested out their cloud. Um, so it's not a matter of, I mean, we are like, not only are we aligned, but we're, you know, we're kind of, we work together all the time. As a matter of fact, I think Rumble would have been here um, but the CEO, I think, is overseas right now um, working on, uh, I think they have some, uh, some conference or something that was overseas, or else we would have been uh, you know, here together. I think Rumble would have been here together with us. 
So, you know, look, right now they are, you know, they went through a similar process like we did. Um, they got their financing through a SPAC. I mean, they've done, you know, they've done very, very well. Um, so they're a publicly traded company. So, you know, right now we're partners and, um, and we, you know, we'll just continue with that as, you know, and see, um, you know, if, if it ever made sense, then obviously, you know, but that'd be something we'd look at down the road. Right now we're both new companies um, and that's, um, and we partner on almost everything. So Twitter got bought out by Elon, obviously. I think it was 54, 55 billion. And DJT, what's the market cap right now? Uh, I don't know, but I haven't seen, but around six, right? Yeah, right around six, yeah. six uh, billion. So mm -hmm. Twitter is almost 10 times the market cap. Where do you see your market cap going over the next two years, five years, 10 years? in terms of if Twitter is 55 billion and they don't have the, the streaming stuff like you guys plan to incorporate and a lot more visionary ideas, um, what do you yeah. see for yourself? Well, look, I don't want to get in. The president and I were both very supportive of Elon you know, buying Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you've also seen there's been plenty of stories that are out there that have been written about this. It was overpaid for it. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's in quite a bit of, you know, I, I don't know what's going to happen to them. Uh, honestly, you know, they've kind of opened up, kind of not opened up, right? It's not as open as we are at True Social. Mm -hmm. um, but look, it's going to be a. I think you know he tried to get out of the purchase at the time because I think he realized there was a lot of bots and fake accounts. Yeah, I remember uh, there was some some but, back and forth kind of going on. You didn't know if it was actually going to get acquired for that price. Yeah. So there's a lot of trading activity kind of around that, which was interesting. Yeah. I see, I see Twitter as a, um, you know, potentially uh, down the road. Um, you know, I think they just announced a partnership with Oracle. Um, mm -hmm. But if you look at the debt that they have that they're carrying, I mean, it's going to be a tough, tough deal because they have, I mean, we, they're not publicly traded anymore, so we don't really know because um, we don't have access to the data. But, you know, for me, Twitter never, I, I used to do a lot of digital advertising back in the political world, and, you know, Twitter never worked for, to, for advertising. It should have, because it's kind of a natural place to be able to target, you know, I'm talking about in, in the political world, because people are on Twitter, they like politics. It's kind of similar to True Social, right? Mm -hmm. um, people are there for news, information, politics, see what it's kind of a, I call it a digital PR wire, you know, over the internet, right? That's what it is. It's like the old AP wire, except except over the internet, uh, and it's a very good for that. It's global and it's and it's sizable, but it's not a place that, outside of kind of people that are you know, want news and information, it's not a place that people go, uh, for the most part, for, you know, entertainment purposes. Mm -hmm. And I think that's their disadvantage to say a TikTok or a, uh, or an Instagram because you get a little bit of all of it. Mm. when you're on those platforms. 100%. Yeah. Not a lot of diversity with, with Twitter. Right. Right. It's, uh, so look, we don't, I don't know what's going to happen, but um, you know, look, we, we're supportive of Elon Musk and we'll continue to be supportive of anybody who is similar. Stands up for freedom of speech. Stand, exactly. And that yep. seems like that's your guys' number one goal from talking with you here and last night. It's That's why you keep kind of pressing home and I can see like the genuine like Freedom of speech is really the thing that matters to you and matters to this company. Yeah, and I never thought, you know, I never thought 10 years ago that we would ever have a problem with freedom of speech because it used yeah. to be the left, right? And, we, and then we thought, oh, wow, with these social media companies, it's going to be great because, you know, you could just express yourself and everybody could express themselves. Um, and I'm just shocked that it was actually the left that came in and, and started shutting down, you know, these social media companies. I mean, and that's, that's what happened. Um, and it happened right after the 2016 election mm -hmm. is when it is when it happened, um, and that's that's what you know led to the creation of this company. And now you know we're going to be around a long time. Um, we've got you know a lot of capital. We've got a lot of you know for strategy that we're implementing. Um, we've built you know really good technology that's really efficient to operate. You know, so we do have some we have some advantages that because we've had to do it all ourselves, we have advantages that these older companies don't have. Mm. All right. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. As we, as we continue to build, I think it's kind of the advantage that we have in streaming too, mm -hmm. right? We don't need to have a big building in New York city. Mm -hmm. Right. 
So it's going to be, the streaming world is going to get interesting quickly um, because there's so many you know, companies that are out there now doing it. A lot of them are all losing money and they've, they have a lot of legacy costs that, they, that they've incurred. So we'll see where that, where that heads. No, we really appreciate your time. We really appreciate your mission. This is something that's important to Jack and I as well. We like to post all the time about, you know, just whatever's on our mind. So having a platform that encourages, inspires, and promotes free speech is something that I think the world needs right now. So we just want to say thank you from us and from all the other people out there that need this. Well, thank you. You're very welcome. And thanks for being here.